Today's Western hunters are inherently connected to their digital devices. The digital world isn't coming to hunting, it's already here. From mapping apps to satellite messengers, rechargeable headlamps to Starlink minis, we're more connected and more dependent on power in the backcountry than ever before. But when your battery dies and your device fails, so does your GPS location, your comms, your maps, and maybe even your ability to tag the animal. In this new era of hunt applications, digital licenses, e-tags, and mandatory reporting, your phone just isn't a tool anymore. It's fast becoming your legal leash. In this episode, we're breaking down the best backpack solar panels to keep your digital systems running, and we're pulling back the curtain on the push for digital tagging. What they will track, what you will give up, and a few things nobody's talking about yet. Because in today's backcountry, you're not just being powered, you might be being monitored. Let's get to it. Today's Western Hunter is fully digital. Dead batteries in the backcountry aren't just annoying anymore, they can be outright dangerous. We are powering more devices in the backcountry than ever before. Phones with mission-critical hunt applications, stored offline maps, and our key location points. Satellite communication devices like InReach, Zolio, Spot, etc. Rechargeable Peaks headlamps, at least you should be running that one battery charging packs to keep it all running. Even some of us now are packing Starlink minis, so we have no work reason to come out of the backcountry. The common denominator, they all take power and lots of it. Keeping them charged can be challenging in a lot of backcountry hunting situations. Solar panels have become an essential gear item. A good solar panel combined with a solid power bank or two, and you've got 24-7 uptime for all your electronics gear. Technology has definitely transformed how we hunt in the West. Some of our most important gear items, besides our weapon, need power. When your power goes out, likely so does your hunt. In this episode, we're going to break down four backpack solar panels that will help Western hunters keep their phones, power banks, satellite communications, headlamps, and everything in between charged and running at their peak. The Solar Panel Showdown. First, let's compare the core raw features between the four units that we've chosen. The Cruxley Speed Goat. This solar panel comes in at 25 watts, weighs in at only 11 ounces, the lightest in the solar panel class. It has dual ports with both USB-A and USB-C PD, which is a power delivery port. We will talk more about that coming up next. It features very fast charging for devices and it's PD compatible with power banks that can accept it. It's ultralight, ultra-thin, and has a very flexible build. This panel is best for minimalist and ultralight setups where every ounce matters, but full-size big power is still required. The standout feature with the Cruxley is the USB-C PD port. This port allows for faster charging and reduced device downtime. The Dark Energy Spectre. This unit produces 18 watts, weighs in at 15.3 ounces. It has a USB-A and a USB-C port. It's IPX7 waterproof, it's crush resistant, and it's been field tested by some of the best. It has a built-in sunlight efficiency meter that helps you find the optimal panel angle. It also has an integrated kickstand that improves panel tilt and sun exposure. This unit is ruggedized and it's rollable for stashing inside packs or wrapping around gear. This panel is great for harsh weather, wet environments, or extended hunts where gear takes serious abuse. This might be the toughest and the most rugged design in the panel lineup. It's built for rough hunts. The Sunjack ETFE. This panel comes in at 25 watts, weighs around 28 pounds, which makes it the heaviest in the class. It has dual USB-A ports and a USB-C PD port, giving it three ports in total. It features an ETFE laminate coating for high durability, UV resistance, and a very long lifespan. This unit can charge multiple devices at once. It folds down pretty compact. This panel is a good value for hunters who want durability and multiple ports in a single panel. And we wrap up with the Big Blue Power 28. This panel produces 28 watts. It weighs in at 20.6 ounces. This panel also features three ports, two USB-A ports and one USB-C port with Smart IC technology, which automatically detects and optimizes the output for connected devices. This panel features the traditional compact trifold design. This panel also has an integrated kickstand and is weather-resistant coated. This is a good option for budget-minded hunters looking for maximum wattage and reliable charging without breaking the bank. Why and what is USB-C PD? 
A USB-C PD port, which is a power delivery port, is a type of USB-C port that supports fast charging and power delivery. Typically, it can go up to even 100 watts in some cases. This is not just another port. It's a game changer for charging speed and efficiency, especially in the backcountry. This means instead of waiting for hours to charge your phone, you can get it to 50% in just a few minutes. This assumes your devices support PD. It offers very fast charging speeds and the ability to power multiple devices with a single split cable. This feature might let you focus more on the hunt and less on power management. We all know that weight matters when you're packing deep into the backcountry, especially if you don't have llamas. The question is, how much power are you getting per ounce carried? If you're the kind of hunter who measures gear in ounces and you want all of your gear dialed in, this chart gives you a crystal clear look at which panels give you the most juice for the weight. The Cruxley Speed Goat absolutely crushes it when it comes to weight efficiency, delivering a full 25 watts at just 11 ounces for an amazing 2.27 watts per ounce. This makes it the go-to panel for ultralight setups or extended hunts where every ounce counts. The Dark Energy Spectre and the Big Blue 28 also hold strong positions at 1.8 and 1.36 respectively, especially given their rugged builds and added features like waterproofing and kickstands. The Sunjack 25W ETFE is the heaviest overall, but it does still deliver pretty good efficiency and it does have high performance ratings. The final verdict, what's right for you? If you need light, fast, reliable, durable, and cost is no option, then you're going to want to go with that Cruxley Speed Goat. If you're looking for rugged and ready for harsh conditions and still good performance, the Dark Energy Spectre is a good choice. If you're looking for the best price to wattage ratio, then it's the Big Blue Solar Power 28. And finally, if you're looking for a versatile, durable, mid-price unit with a lot of poor options, then the Sunjack 25 ETFE might be a good choice. My recommendations. I spend 100 days a year in the backcountry, and most of the guys I run with are about the same. We have tried so many solar panel options over the years. Reliable and repeatable power, it's vital to us. It can mean the difference between success and failure on these long extended hunts. Most of us are now running the Cruxley Speed Goat and 1-3 to three Nightcore 10,000 power banks. This is an incredibly powerful and durable combination, and it's the lightest weight option we have found yet. The Cruxley, it's a winner on just about every level. The Cruxley, it's not cheap, but what is worth having these days? The digital tag is coming. It's not a question of if, it's probably more of a question of when. Most Western states now require online applications to secure tags. How long before we are all forced to tag our animals using an application with our GPS location, timestamps, and device identification baked in? Let's put our tinfoil hats on for just a moment. This is not all paranoia. Many Western states are already testing, piloting, and rolling out digital tagging and license systems. Does anyone really know the reach and the capability of these systems? Some of you may already be using these systems. If your state hasn't done it yet, it probably will, and soon. What are your thoughts on this? On the surface, it does sound slick. No more torn or soggy tags. No lost carcass tags. Everything just stored on your phone. Simple, right? As hunters, what are we potentially giving up in exchange? When your phone becomes your license, what happens when you lose your phone or drop it in the creek, has a software failure, the application crashes, or maybe it errors out? You're potentially out of compliance. This might not be a convenience anymore. It might become more of a liability. So let's be real. Digital tags don't just record your kill. They record you and just about everything about you. Your GPS location, the exact date and minute that you access the tag, the device ID, it's all logged. And exactly who has access to this information? Where does your data go? How is your data stored? How is the data analyzed? Is the data always encrypted? The real kicker here is, can it be used against us? Based on the track record of many of these state-run online application systems, Idaho quickly comes to mind, we probably don't want to know. Because if there is a breach, and there have been multiple confirmed breaches, your private hunt data, your coordinates, your honey holes, they could all be exposed. Not because you shared it, not because you posted it on Instagram, but because your state agency did. Can they get in there and muck around? Can they access, hack your phone, or track you live? What about access to server-side logs or user-submitted data? Let's be real. Government overreach is a thing, a real thing, that happens on the daily. Don't think for one moment that these systems won't be abused and used as weapons. I mean, if the IRS can do it, it should be expected out of our game and fish agencies. 
Can you be tracked in real time without a warrant? Of course they will say no, but is that reality? I mean, how easy would it be and how hard would it be to find out if it happened behind closed doors? Okay, let's assume it's not live. Well, then how often does the application store your GPS position in the log? Can that interval be tinkered with if they want to? Remember, you did agree to that 100-page cryptic scrollable terms of service when you signed on. Does that agreement allow carte blanche sharing of all your data? What you can count on is that your submitted data can and does get accessed, analyzed, and retained because you clicked agree. Don't get me wrong, I am not anti-technology. I teach digital tools and mapping. I love technology and I rely on it all the time. I'm just poking around, asking some questions, and trying to draw attention to a few issues to get you thinking. Are we trading convenience for control? I'm just asking a few of the hard questions before they start answering them for us. Let's face it, power is the new lifeline for the backcountry western hunter. Your maps, devices, messages, your light, your tag, it all runs on a charge. And that reliance, it's only growing. Solar panels, power banks, rechargeable devices, this gear isn't optional anymore. It's essential. We've moved far away from the compass and paper map days to a world where a dead battery could end your hunt. That's our reality now. If that wasn't enough, now we have to worry about the government tracking us on our hunts. Once your tag becomes data, you become data. If we're not paying attention, we're not just losing signal. We might be losing some freedoms. We depend on tech that we barely understand. That's the risk. That's the reality. I'll see you next time.